the Gungalan homestead tells an historical story of the landowner families that built and lived in it, one of love and laughter, but also of sorrow and tragedy. Here is a glimpse of life as the Davis family experienced it. The year was somewhere between 1840 and 1850. William Davis had just established a cattle station when his boss, George Palmer, asked William to manage his estate in Ginandera. Under his management, the property became very successful. William met and soon fell in love with Mr. Palmer's younger daughter, Susan Adriana or Addie, as she was affectionately called. They were happily married in 1850, but their happiness was cut short when Addie's father died four years later, leaving her the estate and in the very capable hands of his son-in-law. In 1862, William began to build them a grand Georgian home, finishing it in 1865. They named it Gungalin, later known as Gungalin. William became a very successful landowner and was well liked and respected by all who knew him. His employees loved him for his kindness and worked diligently. William's estate became the social and sporting hub, often filled with talk and laughter. They loved hunting and horse races, but especially cricket. William added three Aboriginal men, Bobby Dumonga, Johnny and Jimmy Taylor to his team where Johnny became their star player. Despite the cheer of their busy home, sadly William and Addie were unable to fill it with children of their own. However, they loved and doted on their nephew Henry Palmer as if he were their own son. One day in 1877, the Davises attended a horse jumping event. Henry was out jumping obstacles on William's horse, Gungalin. Then tragedy struck. Gungarlene suddenly balked at a jump and reared up on his hind legs. Henry tried to control the horse, but to no avail. Henry was thrown off and died where he lay. He was only 24. Overwhelmed with grief, William and Addie immediately sold everything they had and moved away from the beloved estate. Even through this tragedy, there was now hope of a new beginning. The estate's next owner, Edward Crace was also successful, not only on the land, but in filling the renewed, grander home with the sound of many pattering feet. A new family had come, with new joys, new sorrows, and a new story for the estate to tell.